Tommy's gonna taste the gin so that you don't have to Let you save your money, yeah, that's what Tommy wants Minimal dilution, cause we wanna taste the gins But if the gins are bad, then we will throw them in the bin Now let's send it over to Tommy, who is gonna taste? He's gonna get on rowdy and shout up the place Blah, blah. It's the Tommy Taste Show. Welcome back, Distillation Talks. It's where Tommy tastes the gin so that you don't have to. And today, we gonna be drinking that gin neat, boy. When I taste, I f***ing taste. I thought it's been a while since we did something truly esoteric. So, allow me to introduce ba 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 Brick Gin. Ooh la la. Now, if you're Pink Floyd, get on the phone to your lawyers because this must be in violation of copyright. Um, that or Dave Gilmore just doesn't give a shit. Or Roger Waters, but mainly Dave Gilmore. What can I say about this gin? To be honest, there's not a lot to really say. This is a German gin. This is a German gin with only three botanicals. As we've spoken about before, the only thing that qualifies a gin to be a gin is that the main ingredient, botanical, is juniper. And yes, juniper is the main ingredient in brick gin, but it only has two other botanicals. One being coriander, pretty standard in a gin of any description, and two, black pepper, cubeb pepper to be precise, three, pretty, I don't want to say uninteresting botanicals, but three botanicals that you would certainly expect. I think there is a good argument for doing gins that are just three botanicals, because it does give you a chance to see what the difference is in selected juniper and selected other botanicals maybe that go along with it. But maybe it's just a bit too, I don't know, uninteresting? and maybe just doesn't fit with the vibe of what gin is, particularly in today's really crowded craft market where you've got to have a gin that changes color or one that just is exceptional when you have it with mango juice. It's just, I don't know really what niche this gin fulfills. I have had one that's fairly similar in the sense that it only has three botanicals before, which is Death's Door. What the three botanicals are, I don't know, and I can't really be asked to look up. But what I do remember about that gin is that it's very expensive, the bottle's really cool, but the gin, it wasn't that it was bad. You just kind of went, when you can do things this well, why did you not just use more botanicals? That's not to say that more botanicals are better, but they will add different layers and complexities that you're going to always slightly struggle to get with three botanicals. One thing though that might make this slightly more interesting is that I'm guessing when you are using three botanicals, it is a gin that is intended to be drunk pure because as you dilute, I'm guessing that some of those nuances will fade into the background whether that's true, I don't know. I am purely speculating at this point. Oh, and one other thing to add, it's organic. Don't really know what that brings to the table, but it's a big thing in Germany and they really like organic here. You may as well slap it on the bottle and just see if you can shift a few more units. It's not that I don't believe in organic, but you know, it's not why I buy gin necessarily. Other things to note, it's 40% not the dream percent, personally like a bit more. Death's Gin to compare is a whopping 47, so it does pack a punch, as you might imagine. You can get it through Masters of Malt in a 500ml bottle like this, but for about 23 quid with postage, which does make it pound for pound way more expensive than really a lot of what I would say medium plus good gins on the UK market. So let's taste 
Is this worth your hard-earned dosh? As you can see, there is a bit taken out of the bottle. I have tried this already, but I was steamingly drunk whilst doing so, so could not fairly assess. So today is the first time I'm really gonna get my nose in and get a good old taste of this gin. There's my 2CL measure of brick gin in my normal Ponzi little tasting glass. Let's have a good whiff. Smell sequence initiated, detecting no interesting notes. This gin smells fucking boring. There's no other way of putting it. It smells like a gin. That's all I can say. There's nothing distinct. There's nothing particularly clear that's cutting through. It's a bit citrusy. It's a bit peppery. It's a bit woody and piney, thanks to the juniper. And that's exactly what you would expect with a gin that's comprised of pepper, coriander, and juniper. It's just pretty uninteresting. I'm hoping for something really exceptional on the palate. I want to like this gin, but it's making it very hard for me to like it. Let's chug it down. So the positive news is that on the palate, it's actually very nice. It's nowhere near as boring as the nose suggests that it would be. That nose is so muted. On the palate, it's spicy. It feels like one of those kind of over juniper -y gins, like Sipsmith did the VJOP, which is absolute gash like all of Sipsmith's products are. This one has got a real like pine forest and juniper feel on the finish. That is such a twat thing to say, but it, it is true. And it's nice and sweet, nice and spicy. But hopefully not this spicy, Whee -ya! And I actually really like it, which pissed me off because I really wanted to hate this gin. Well, not really wanted to hate it, but I wanted to give a negative review because I feel like the vast majority of reviews that I've done have been positive and to be honest, it's just more fun to slag something off. But Brick Gin, why did you have to make me like you like this? Let's hope that it gets shit with some ice. This gets my lowest rating ever. Seven thumbs up. It's amazing how much the ice has changed this gin. That woody pine forest twattery that I was going on about before has really jumped much more to the forefront. I think it's slightly lost some of the slightly more citrus and aromatic notes that it had, but it does feel woody as fuck. It feels like some I've got some like porn star length in my mouth. Make up your mind whether that's good or bad. It feels like it's slightly lacking something now, and I way preferred it when it was just neat. Uh, I'm gonna have another taste now that the ice is diluted a little more and tell you if I find anything different. Your cooking's only got two moves, shake and bake. I feel like I'm losing it a bit now. It was good when I still had the majority of an ice cube in there, but now that the ice cube's diluted it, it's starting to feel a little generic -y and lacking in power, and that's a bit annoying. So I'm gonna to top this up with a little more gin, and I'm gonna put a touch of water in there and see if I can find a gin that I really like. I'm the most powerful gin critic around and there will be no comeuppance. You hear me? No comeuppance. Nah, it's gone. And I think what this gin is, is kind of, as the name suggests, it's supposed to be like a back to basics gin that's really going to kind of like build up. And when they can do such a great job with a straight gin, why don't they just put a bit more in? You've done all the hard parts in getting your still and learning how to distill a product. So why not put a bit more into it? I get that you wanna do this kind of really organic and traditional take on gin, and that's great, it's very commendable, but it's never going to be anyone's favorite gin. And it's sad because there's obviously real quality that's gone into this and two distillers that really know what they're doing but it's just not good enough and that's purely because I think they've chosen to keep it minimalist. Admirable but there. Now if you're thinking of using this in a cocktail, fuck right off. Don't bother. Bombay or Gordon's in your cocktail this is not going to add anything there and it will be fucking expensive to do so. Brick gin, please keep producing gin, but please produce one that's got a bit more get up and go in it. I love your gin neat, but uh, would I recommend buying it? 
Like, like, and subscribe, subscribe. Like, and subscribe. Love.